Hey, problem solvers. It's time for science. And I have a big question for you. Could a volcano pop up in your neighborhood? That might seem like kind of a silly question, but there's a lot that happens in science that I wouldn't expect. So let's dive deeper into this question and see if we can gather some more information before answering it. All right, this is lava. Whoa, <laughs> it's so awesome. Let's watch it, um, let's watch it move. Whoa, this stuff is so hot. Anything flammable that lava touches instantly catches fire. Oh, like these tree roots. Tree roots, the tree roots burn. Whoa, look at that. The tree roots burn as lava touches them. Make it bigger. <laughs> it's amazing to think about that, right? I mean, this, this is a liquid. It's a flammable, hot liquid. And you can see here that it's flowing, as liquids tend to do. But it's a rock. It's a liquid and it's a rock. It's liquid rock. In order for a rock to melt into a liquid, it has to be like really, really, really hot. Nearly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way hotter than you or, or I or any other living thing for that matter can survive. Um, now, lava, as you know, flows out of a volcano, right? And most of us don't live anywhere near a volcano, so we're fine, right? I mean, it would be awesome to go visit a volcano. It would be so cool. It would really be a trip of a lifetime to get uh, to go near any one of these volcanoes and to be able to see the lava up close and feel that heat. But what if you didn't have to visit a volcano? What if a volcano came to you? <laughs> like what if a volcano erupted in your neighborhood, like right here in Brooklyn? or Manhattan, or wherever you tend, wherever you happen to be while watching this video. I mean, that's just crazy, right? Could a volcano ever pop up somewhere like a backyard or a park? I know what you're thinking, right? No way. No way. We're fine. There's no way. But let me tell you a true story. It's about a man who lives in Mexico um, in a small town called Perucutan. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Feel free to correct me if I'm not. So, in February of 1943, February 20th to be exact, um, the man, his name was um, Dioniso Pulido, was out in his fields with his horses, plowing the earth so that he could plant corn. But at 4 p.m. that day, there was tremendous boom, and the earth shook. What do you think? <laughs> What's happening? What do you think happened? Diocene? Dionysio. I want to make sure I pronounce his name right. Um, he went around and looked around his farm and he found a large crack in the field just like this one. I 
and before long, lava began to squirt out of the crack. And by the end of the first day, there was no longer just a crack. Remember, this is a true story. The lava started to cool and pile on top of each other. And it started to form a hill that ended up being 160 feet tall. And this is a real photograph of that volcano in Paracutan during its first few days. This is only a couple days old, this 160 foot volcano. The townspeople gathered to watch it erupt. How incredible, they thought, to see a tiny volcano forming in what just yesterday was a completely black cornfield. Huh. The volcano kept erupting lava every day. After about three months time, the lava was now starting to flow closer to the main part of town. Everyone immediately left town to seek safety somewhere else. But as they turned back to look, that's when they realized that there wasn't going to be any home to come back to. This wasn't like a flood where, you know, the water eventually flows away. It's lava. And what does lava do when it cools? It hardens to rock. So this is the town of Paracutan today. And you can see that the town was buried, it was frozen in rock. All of the rubble here is the hardened lava rock, a type of rock which scientists call basalt. When the lava came through town, the intense heat burned down all the wooden buildings. So today, only a few stone buildings like this church are left. And you can see the top of the church, just to the top, is poking out of the basalt. Nuts, right? I think the story is so fascinating. And so after hearing that story, I want to ask you again, could a volcano pop up where you live? Maybe you still say no way, but it happened to this farmer in Mexico. And are you sure that it couldn't happen to you? <laughs> so problem solvers, before we go any further, um, I want you guys to take a moment to pause. I want you to think ab about your ideas. Do you think it's possible for a volcano to pop up where you live? Why or why not? I'm going to keep going in a moment, but I want you to be prepared to come to Zoom with the answer to this question. So let's just take one moment and um, think about it before we move on, okay? After taking that moment to pause, I'm actually, I'm going to stop the video here because before I move on with the rest of this, I want us to have a, a chance to discuss it as a class. So jot down any answers or come with them in your head and be, pre be prepared to talk about this. Um, do you think it is possible for a volcano to pop up where you live? Why or why not? Can't wait to talk more about this 
fascinating subject with you guys, and I'll see you soon on Zoom. Bye.